All right, welcome to unit two of your AMP2 lab. Uh, in this unit, we're gonna be talking about the heart anatomy. All right, when you're first looking at the anterior of the heart, I want you to kind of mentally start separating the heart into two sides, okay? You've got your right and you've got your left, okay? Now, I want you to divide it into four quadrants, okay? The upper part are where you, um, the um, superior side is where you have the atria, and the inferior is where you have the ventricles, okay? So right here, you're dividing the right and left side. So you have right atrium, which is this section right here. You have right ventricle, which is that section, okay? Now notice I've drawn a box right here. All right, this is marking the interventricular septum. Septum meaning wall inter between ventricles. This separates the right and left sides of the heart. There's also an interatrial septum, but we don't pay as much attention to it, okay? Then on the left side, on the upper part, you have the left atrium, all right, which is this segment right here. And then down here, you have the left ventricle, okay? Next slide. All right, the heart sits in the ventral body cavity in the thoracic body cavity, okay? And then the thoracic, you'll remember, is divided into the pleural cavity, the pair, uh, the media, and the right and left, uh, the right and left pleural cavities and the mediastinum. And then within the mediastinum, you have the pericardial cavity. So this would be the pericardial cavity within the mediastinum. You have a pleural cavity here and a pleural cavity here. The lungs are within those cavities. Dividing it down here, you've got the diaphragm. Now, if you've forgotten what pericardium is or pleura or serosa, you need to go back and review those definitions. So you need to know what pericardium is and what tissues it's made out of. Same thing with pleura. And you might as well go back and review the term serosa or serous membrane. All right, on this picture, we've popped the heart out so that you can more clearly see the um, pericardial sac. This is mislabeled, actually. The, pr uh, the pl pleural membrane is actually right here, okay? This membrane here is the pericardial sac. Okay, so that's actually pericardium. And this is probably a copy error. Um, when I move this from one field to the next, sometimes the arrows don't line up right. So this black arrow should actually just be to right there. All right, it should be on the parietal pleura. Okay, now going into the pericardial sac, you need to get vessels in and out. So we've got a hole for the superior and inferior vena cava. You've got the aorta, the opening for the bronchi, and of course the four pulmonary veins, okay? All right, um, next slide. And some of the other errors didn't come over either when I copied it into this particular app, so um, sorry about that. All right, so in this particular picture, I want you to focus on the right atrium right here, okay? This little flappy ear thing, just this part, is called the oracle. Going into the right atrium, I have the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava, okay? Now over here on the left atrium, you can see peeking through the four pulmonary veins. Those all go into the left atrium, and you can see a little bit of the oracle here, okay? Now we have some other things to look at. Um, you've got the ligamentum arteriosum, in the fetus, it is the ductus arteriosus, okay? Um, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So that's your aorta, and this is your pulmonary trunk. I suggest you print these out and kind of label them yourselves. I've got several of the vessels labeled here. I'll talk more about those in a little bit. All right, looking at your cadaver cart, you're gonna do the same basic thing. You're gonna divide it into right and left, and then upper and lower so that I've got my right atrium with the little flappy oracle, I've got my left atrium with its little oracle, I've got my right ventricle, my left ventricle, okay? 
you can see here the aorta and here is the pulmonary trunk always remember that the pulmonary trunk is more anterior so the aorta is in the back the pulmonary trunk is in the front okay um, we can see other little veins um, that is the wrong label for the superior vena cava the arrow is going it should be going to right there because this is the aorta okay sorry yeah I'm having some problems with some of these um, arrows um, when I copied this over um, you can see a blood vessel here, which is your anterior interventricular artery and the right coronary artery. All right, let's hope that this one's labeled a little bit better, that the arrows aren't messing up. So here you can see the interventricular septum dividing the right ventricle from the left ventricle. Okay, within here, I've got these little nipply things that are called papillary muscles. I've got the ridges and the walls here, which are called trabeculae. All right, you see these ridging right in here. And then um, this would be another papillary muscle right here, okay? Um, off of the papillary muscles, I have these little strings called chordae tendineae, okay? Those attach to the AV valves and prevent them from inverting, okay? Now, here is the aorta. Here is the pulmonary trunk, okay? I've got my superior vena cava. Those all look like they are labeling correctly. That's good. Now, very few pictures can you see the coronary artery openings very well, but you can here and here. And what I want you to take away from that is that technically the very first branches off the aorta are the coronary arteries, which perfuse the heart muscle itself. Now, basically going through about here, to here and it's back behind the structure so you can't see it but you will have your um, aortic semilunar valve okay here you can see the pulmonary semilunar valve okay the pulmonary semilunar valve goes between the right ventricle to the pulmonary trunk the aortic semilunar valve goes between the left ventricle into the aorta okay all right next slide all right here we have flipped the heart so that you can see the back of it. So you're still dividing it into the right and left side. Now, depending on how it's angled on the back view, sometimes you mostly just see the um, the ventricles, okay? Excuse me, not the ventricles, the left, the atrium. So right here, this is all left atrium, okay? The only part of the right atrium you're seeing is basically right there. Let me change color so they can see that. So that is your left atrium right there. And you'll see openings for the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava into the right atrium. There's one more hole, and that's going to be right here. And this is for the coronary sinus to empty its blood into the right atrium. So there are three paths for deoxygenated blood, venous blood, to get back into the right atrium. That is the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, and the coronary sinus. Okay. Now, here I have a pulmonary vein, pulmonary vein, pulmonary vein, pulmonary vein. There are four pulmonary veins that all empty into this left atrium. Okay. Now, also on the back view, you will see coming from the anterior, now notice the direction of the arrows, the great cardiac vein. All veins on the surface of the heart empty into the coronary sinus, which then empties into the right atrium. We can also see the posterior, and change color, the posterior interventricular um, artery. Actually, let me change back to that color. Let's go back to red because then it's really confusing when you use um, blue for a artery. So this is your posterior interventricular artery with the middle cardiac vein next to it. So then you can kind of draw that vein back in right there. Okay. All right. Let's flip to the next slide. All right. Here is a cadaver heart. And you can see the opening for the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava so that you know this is the right atrium, so then that means that is the left atrium. 
You can see some of the openings for the pulmonary veins, but not most of them. I can see the posterior um, interventricular artery right here, okay? Um, and then I've got the vein coming up. Wait, 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 sorry, I messed that up. Um, yeah, okay, so here's the artery. So the artery is kind of coming down here and then it's been cut up a little bit. And why am I doing the arteries in blue? It's so confusing when I do that. It's like, because I like the blue better. And then you've got the middle cardiac vein coming up um, in there, okay? Um, all right, let's flip over to the next slide. All right, this slide, we're looking at the arteries and veins, and we have the anterior view over here and the posterior view over here. Okay, so basically, let me switch. I've got my right coronary artery going here, and then you can't see it, but coming off the aorta and going between the pulmonary trunk and the left atrium is the left coronary artery, which comes out here. Now, right here, it branches immediately, and it, one branch is going to be the anterior interventricular artery. The other branch is going to be the circumflex, which is going to go around the lateral side of the heart. The left coronary artery is gonna wrap around. It's got a couple of little ancillary branches. We're not gonna worry about it, but it goes over here. Now let's come over here, and you see the right coronary is snaking around the posterior, and it gives rise to the posterior interventricular artery right here, okay? Those are the arteries I want you to know. The venous drainage, okay? You have the um, middle cardiac vein, okay? coming up here, and, excuse me, the great cardiac vein coming up here, wrapping around here, going into the coronary sinus. On the posterior side, you have the middle cardiac vein emptying into the coronary sinus. So you're just going to know those two. And then the coronary sinus empties into the left atrium. Pause. Oh, goodness. All right, let's quickly review those valves. You've got your right AV valve here and your left AV valve there, okay? I have my pulmonary semilunar valve here, and then you can't see it, but back there, I will have my aortic semilunar valve, okay? Please know the full names of all of these. All right, so here we've had someone who's had a camera put up into their heart so that you can see the lips of that aortic semilunar valve, which is a one-way check valve that's controlled by pressure. So when the pressure is high in the ventricles, it opens, okay? And when the pressure drops, it closes, okay? Um, what's nice about this picture is that you've also got one of the openings right there to the coronary artery. All right, next slide. All right, the AV valves are thicker. They look to me like the ridges of a venous flytrap. So you can see the ridges of the valve here. I've got the chordae tendineae attaching to the papillary muscles. When this valve, when this area contracts, these muscles tighten. That tightens on these, and that prevents this valve from inverting back into the a atria which is important because this valve isn't, isn't very stiff. It could easily go the wrong way if you didn't hold on to it with those um, chordae. These chordae are also called, more commonly known in uh, lay language, the heart strings. Okay, if you've heard that term before. All right, you need to know the pulmonary division, all right, which is basically going from the right side, all right, to the lungs, and you need to know the systemic division, which goes from the lungs to the left side and then out to basically everywhere else in the body. So you need to know this pathway. It's one of the things you're going to be drawing out, and you need to be able to label uh, the entire thing. So like, like superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk, lungs, pulmonary veins, 
um, left atrium, left ventricle, aorta, toes, okay? All right, this is another way of looking at it, okay? And you'll see the way I've numbered it. So I've got deoxygenated blood from the systemic division pulling into the superior and inferior vena cava, okay? Those empty into the right atrium. The right atrium goes through the right AV valve into the right ventricle. The right ventricle goes through the pulmonary semilunar valve into the pulmonary trunk, into the two pulmonary arteries, which goes to the lungs. The lungs send the blood back into the pulmonary veins. The four pulmonary veins empty into the right, excuse me, the left atrium, which goes through the left AV valve into the left ventricle, which goes out through the aortic semilunar valve um, out to the rest of the body um, and perfuses the rest of the body. Know this pathway, know all the parts to the pathway, know the names of the structures that the direction of the blood is going through, understand the directionality of the blood as well. All right, next slide. All right, what I've done on this slide is just written out the parts, okay? So the previous slide shows the pictures. Sometimes people like the pictures not to be in the way, so you can use this as another way of thinking about it. Don't forget about that coronary circulation. And here is your coronary circulation and the parts that I want you to know, okay? Special elements, you need to memorize these. You have the ductus arteriosus and the foramen ovale. The ductus arteriosus is between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta, and the foramen ovale is between the right and left atrium, okay? In the adult, after the child, after the baby is born and takes its first breath, the ductus arteriosus collapses and becomes scar tissue and it's now called ligamentum arteriosum. The foramen ovale snaps shut and now it is called the fossa ovalis. So a foramen is a hole, a fossa is a depression. A ductus is a tube, ligamentum is scar tissue. Okay, for both of these, identify them on models, find them, all right, and know what they do functionally in the fetus. Okay, these questions will show up on the quiz, so know those. Okay, that is the end of unit two um, for the uh, lecture slides. Um, okay.